Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. Welcome everyone to this Singochel lecture series number 72 brought to you from Life Faculty of Engineering University Technology in Malaysia. My name is Amir Zanadipur and I am from the Institute of High Voltage and High Current, the School of Electrical Engineering, University Technology in Malaysia. First of all, I would like to thank Professor Datu Engineer, Dr. Muhammad Rafiq, the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, for supporting this lecture. For your information, the Singosh Lecture Series, we invited prominent professors around the globe to share the knowledge, expertise, and experience, and perhaps to exchange ideas. Hence, it gives me great pleasure to invite our speaker today, Professor Mohamed Ben Bozid from the University of Brest in France. Prof. Mohamed, the deliverer, uh, the lecturer with entitled Electric and Hybrid Vehicles Massive Deployments on Optimal and Fault Tolerance Control Issue today. So, for those who know, Prof. Mohamed is a well known professor in the field of the renewable energy and the microgrid. Without any delay, I would like to invite Professor Mohamed Rafiq, the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, for further introduction of our speaker. Over to you, Prof. Thank you, Dr. Amir Reza, for chairing the session. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, everyone, to our 72nd UTM Engineering Distinguished Lecture Series. My name is Mohamed Rafiq, and I am the Dean of Engineering University Technology, Malaysia. Today, it is my utmost pleasure to welcome Professor Mohamed Ben Bouzid from University of Brest, France. A bit about our distinguished speaker today. Mohamed Ben Bouzid received the BSc degree in Electrical Engineering from the University of Batna, Algeria in 1990. MSc and PhD degrees in Electrical and Computer Engineering from the National Polytechnic Institute of Grenoble, France in 1990. <laughs> and 1994 respectively and he received habilitation degree from the University of Amiens France in the year 2000. After receiving the PhD degree he joined the University of Amiens France where he was an associate professor of electrical and computer engineering. Since September 2004 he has been with the University of Brest France where he is a full professor of electrical engineering. Prof. Bin Bouzid is also a distinguished professor and a 1,000 talent expert at the Shanghai Maritime University, Shanghai, China. His main research interests and experience include analysis, design and control of electric machines, variable speed drives for traction, propulsion and renewable energy applications, and fault diagnosis of electric machines. Prof. Ben Bouzid has been elevated as an IEEE Fellow for his contributions to diagnosis and fault tolerant control of electric machines and drives. He is also a Fellow of the IET. He is the Editor-in-Chief of the International Journal on Energy Conversion and the Applied Sciences, MDPI, Section on Electrical, Electronics and Communications Engineering. He is a subject editor for the IET Renewable Power Generation. He is also an associate editor of the IEEE Transactions on Energy Conversion. So that is a brief biography of our distinguished speaker today. Here now is Professor Mohamed Ben Bouzid from University of Brest, France, with his talk entitled Electric and Hybrid Vehicles Massive Deployment and on optimal and fault tolerant control issues. Professor Mohammed bin Bouzid, over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Rafiq, thank you, Dr. Amir Reza, for the kind introduction. And I will, uh, I will start sharing my, my presentation. Um, okay, yes, and... Uh, yeah, I hope you will find it interesting. And this is, in fact, my presentation is um, is a sort of mix between the lectures, tutorial, and uh, and some uh, uh, research research. So, as as uh, introduced by Professor Rafiq and Doctor Amin Reza, the, the title of my presentation is "Electric and Hybrid Vehicles Massive Deployment," and uh, the topic here is in, uh, talking about optimal and fault tolerant control issues. So this is the outline of my presentations. First, uh, I will give um, maybe a sort of uh, tutorial as an introduction, talking about uh, the vehicle. And just to mention that 
it, it should be considered just as a, as a machine associated with an inverter, but the whole system, including his uh, his dynamic. This is the topic of the the second uh, point of my presentation. So after that, I will in this uh, introduction and I will show that there is two main issues uh, that has to be faced by uh, vehicles to be massively de uh, deployed. First is performance optimization, then the uh, the problem of the, the resilience in, in case of faults. I will before concluding with some future trends. I will quickly talk about uh, fuel uh, fuel cell electric vehicles. So just a few words about history in case of electric and hybrid vehicle. The first, just to mention that the first electric vehicle seems to be a French vehicle called the in, Fran uh, in French La Jamais Content, which means in English, the never happy. This is, uh, as you see in these two pictures, uh, this is uh, uh, a vehicle with a, with a very good aerodynamic aerodynamics. It looks like a torpedo and this, uh, this, this first vehicle has reached the the speed of 100 km by hours in the uh, in the end of the of the 80s so now of course when we talk about electric vehicles should we talk about uh, the tesla and i have also uh, given an illustration of, uh, of a well known french vehicle it is one of the most uh, sell vehicle in the french market it's called the renault zoe the full electric vehicle now, what about hybrid electric vehicle? So, about before talking about hybrid vehicle, just to to quickly mention what should be the architecture of an electric vehicle here. So, the the main components are here: the battery, the inverter, and the motor. I, I have also shown here the transmission because later I will show that maybe removing this transmission can can help to optimize the. Uh, the performance of an electric vehicle. Now, again, history uh, regarding the uh, now the, the hybrid vehicle. You show these two pictures show the first Porsche. This is really Porsche. At this time, it was called Lona Porsche in 1995. Uh, 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 so this is the first electric uh, and hybrid electric vehicle. And you can see here, this is a vehicle including an ICE and uh, one of the first used wheeled motor. This is a, a DC motor in the wheel. So this is history. And now, of course, when we talk about uh, hybrid electric, uh, we can uh, give an example here of the, the CHR SUV from, uh, from Toyota and also one of the most sold uh, hybrid vehicle in the French market. This is the, uh, the owned by uh, Peugeot. Uh, this is the DS uh, 6WR, uh, set in the market start in, in the 2018. Now, what about the uh, the key the key elements when we talk about hybrid vehicle? The first important uh, keywords is the hybrid uh, the level the levels of hybridizations. So we have three types. The first one is the micro hybrid. So typically, this is the case of any. Any, any classical vehicles we call micro hybrid. So in this case, we use a small electric, small electric motors generator of about three kilowatt. This motor is typically used ju just as an alternator or a starter. So this is used uh, for the automatic restarts for some uh, for some uh, classical uh, vehicle. We have also mild hybrid. This is um, an important range of. Uh, actually sell vehicles. It is a mild hybrid with uh, motors ranging from 5 to 10 kilowatts. I'm showing you the example of the of the of the Honda Insight with the uh, with the electric motor here is close to the to the ICE. Typically here this is a permanent magnet synchronous generator. So here the motor is again used as an alternator and starter and starter sorry and uh, in terms of operation it is used only in the acceleration phase. So this is not really um, uh, a clear hybrid vehicle because the, the, the electric motor is used just in, in a short uh, operating time. Now here it is used in the acceleration phase, trying to optimize the, uh, the, the efficiency of the, whole, uh, of the whole vehicle. Of course, 
uh, in this uh, type of car, we use uh, regenerative braking. And finally, the, the full hybrid. This is actually the, the big tendency in the in the hybrid market, uh, hybrid electric market with motor, uh, uh, electric machine, so operating as motor or generator with power uh, more than 10 kilowatts. We can reach in sometimes, I will show some example later, we can reach uh, almost uh, 120 kilowatts. Here we have the possibility, this is the important thing, we have the possibility to, to have a full electric propulsion. And of course here the, the motor can be used in the acceleration phase when we are using the, the IC. In terms of architecture, we have mainly three types. The two first one are classical ones. The, the first one is the series architectures. Typically, with, with here we have two machines, one for the propulsion, here is the motor, and one uh, for the generator, uh, which, which is connected, the generator is connected to the uh, ICE. Uh, quickly showing how this type of architect is working. So in the starting, of course, we start with the battery uh, to propel the vehicle. So when we uh, we have some high speed, we need some some acceleration steps. So we, we need to use the ICE, but in his optimal operating point, then for the cruising here, we can do some, some we can recharge the battery uh, still using the, the IC in its optimal point. So in the regenerative braking, of course, we will try to, to, to recharge the battery. So the second architecture is the, the parallel one. And in this case, we're using just one, one, one motor working as a motor generator, one machine working on motor and generator. Uh, and in this case, we have a specific things called the, the clutch. Uh, this is this is typical to a parallel hybrid. So to to understand the uh, the operation of such kind of architectures. So in the starting, of course, uh, we use batteries to start to 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 propel the the, the hybrid vehicle. Then if we need uh, if you need to accelerate the vehicle uh, to increase the speed, we need to uh, to uh, to switch on the clutch and introduce the IC. In the, the operation again, I would like to mention that in if you want to optimize the the the, the vehicle uh, global efficiency, we need to uh, to operate the, the IC in its optimal point. So of course, when we are in CD speed or CD state operation, we will of course uh, try to one possible res uh, recharge the, the the batteries, and of course again some regenerative braking here. There is another, another, a third architecture. This is a patent from uh, from Toyota. This is used typically in in his uh, three Prius one, two, and three uh, uh, Toyota. This is called the CVT. This is uh, we can say that this is uh, looks like a power splitting architectures using a, a planetary gear here with two with two with two machines one operating always as a generator and one operating as a motor. This is regarding the topic of my presentation. We can consider this, this architecture as a sort of uh, fault resilient uh, architecture uh, done in the design stage. Why? Because when you look at the operation, we have the possibility here to, uh, to operate even in full or in hybrid, or of course we can mix as in this case. Uh, if you have a failure in the IC, we can have a, a full electric operation. If you have a failure in the electric vehicle, we can operate with the IC and so on. And of course, when we are in a steady uh, speed and when possible, we can we can use the planetary gear to recharge the, the, uh, the batteries and again, regenerate the braking. So, this is this third part of my introduction was regarding the the top, uh, the, uh, the 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 different type of electric and hybrid vehicles. Now, what about the 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 drives uh, and typically the the motor topologies used in uh, in electric and hybrid vehicles? Typically, uh, we can find in the market 
three, uh, four types, the DC uh, motor, the induction motor, the permanent magnet, and the variable reluctance motors. In this uh, mentioned reference, we have shown a different type of electric vehicle using uh, such type of uh, topologies, but mainly the, the electric vehicle and hybrid vehicle magnets is shared between the, the induction motor and sure the permanent magnet synchronous motor. So this, this uh, electric mo motors connected, uh, uh, connected with the uh, with the uh, with the, the inverters have to have to match some uh, some typical characteristics and constraints shown in this slide. In the right side, uh, in the left side, sorry, figure. This is attractive effort, and we can see that we have one first constraint, the high torque starting torque, and the second one. We have a constant power operating, typically after the, the the nominal speed here, and when we are working at the constant power, we need to do a, a sort of a flux weakening operation of the vehicle. This is in the right side figure. This is the the, the interpretation of the tractive effort. Is we we move from the tractive effort, and we uh, interpret this uh, constraint and transfer it to the electric motors. And we find similarities, high starting torque here, and uh, and uh, uh, constant power operate operation here. If you want, and if you want to increase the speed of the vehicle, we need to do what we call flux weakening of the of the electric machine. This is a summary of motor generators in key hybrid vehicle. If you see uh, quickly in this uh, in this uh, in this. Uh, uh, slide we can see that in all these well-known hybrid vehicle from Honda and from from Toyota even in the in the Lexus uh, Lexus car we all we are almost using permanent magnet this is uh, surface mounted permanent magnet generator this is insert permanent magnet generator so this is the big tendency so in the Japan uh, in the Japan market we have privileged the, to use the the um, the permanent magnet uh, synchronous uh, motor because of the, uh, the the power density making this machine uh, very useful for embedded applications such as electric and hybrid vehicles so fortunately this is not only uh, the one possibility we have other manufacturers that privileged uh, the induction motor as a, uh, the induction machine at the generator or as a, as a generators this is the case of the Tesla S model. All the Tesla model use the, the induction uh, induction uh, motors. Right? Typically here, uh, this is the, the front motor, this is the rear motors. And uh, of course, the use of the induction uh, motor will be later, I will later uh, try to justify why they privilege this motor and not as uh, not the permanent magnet one. This is uh, one type of motor, the induction generator motor. Other possibilities is the synchronous motor, but with a, a wounded rotor. This is the case of the, uh, this is the choice of Renault for it, for its uh, Zoe model. This is a 64 kilowatt motor. Why the wounded uh, uh, generator, not a synchronous motor and not the permanent magnet? Because mainly because of the the, the price of the permanent magnet. They privileged such kind uh, of motor uh, also for the uh, problem of uh, uh, resilience regarding ma uh, magnets uh, failure, typically demagnetization. Other possibilities, these possibilities have been recently adopted by BMW. Uh, they proposed to use an axial flux induction motor. It's this is a 90 kilowatt axial uh, flux induction motor. So again, using uh, 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 this is a very, very innovative induction motor. This is interesting because it looks like a pancake motor. This is very interested for uh, uh, to uh, uh, for embedded application like like electric vehicle. But this is at this stage just a prototype, a tested tested in a real vehicle. Now. Uh, to, to conclude in this introduction and uh, to, to be close to, to the topic of my presentations. 
So when we talk about electric and hybrid vehicle, we have two main issues. The first issues, the first one is the, the proportion high efficiency. We need to have uh, high efficiency, and if you want to reach this this target, this concept, we, uh, th this target means that we need uh, to extend the autonomy, and the this. This autonomy extension is a sensitive issue, particularly for some military application. Not for military, but this is a sensitive issue for military application. Later, we'll show some, some example. The second uh, issue is the failure resist resilience. Or, uh, resilience is actually a word, may, uh, maybe like a fashion word used in the literature, but the, the original word is for tolerance. Okay, Why this is an issue? Because when we, when we are using electric and hybrid vehicle, we need to achieve a scheduled missions. So we need to, uh, starting from a point A, we need to reach, uh, we should reach the point B, the final point, uh, even if the, the, the proportion is facing uh, failure. And here we need to tolerate this, this failure. This is, again, a very sensitive issue for some critical missions, military mi missions or other other critical mission, I will show later some examples. Though this is the conclusion of my introduction, and I would briefly talk about uh, something important. So sometimes we can, in the literature, we can some we can find some some papers somewhere talking about vehicles, but concentrating just on the electric machines, motor generator, and the inverter and important thing here we need to consider the aerodynamics because this machine and this uh, these drives is is propelling an a vehicle so this vehicle is facing some some tracting efforts typically uh, in in a, in a vehicle any type of vehicle a vehicle is facing three type three type this for sorry four type of uh, and of of, uh, of uh, tracting uh, effort and we need to face the drive need to face destructive effort then so generating this power which is the which is the product between the the vehicle speed and this total this total uh, uh, total uh, tractive effort so typically this is the vehicle and now we we need to move from the uh, aerodynamic uh, vehicle uh, through its uh, its tractive effort and try to translate all this effort and uh, translate it to the uh, to the electric motors propelling the the vehicle so typically uh, the uh, sorry i will back just quickly back to this slide just to say that uh, this four uh, this four uh, effort this is the rolling uh, uh, effort so this is typically due to the, the to the uh, contact between the, the tire and the, and the road this is the, this is the, in fact, the, the it looks like a sliding uh, uh, effort due to the, uh, to the, to the presence or not of a sort of, uh, of, uh, of angle like this angle alpha. This is the aerodynamic effort due to the, of, of course, to the aerodynamics of the vehicle. And, and finally, this is the, uh, the acceleration uh, force of course all these forces are not present at at all time and this in this slide just to show that this required power is of course this is the required power to propel the vehicle we will translate this power to the electric vehicle through this uh, this uh, this uh, loading torque this torque will load the, the vehicle and we will of course later calculate and control the vehicle trying to generate this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, necessary power to properly the vehicle in this case here we have the the wheel speed this is the motor speed this is the inertia of the electric machines now uh, of course when we want uh, we want to study the the performance of an electric vehicle or a hybrid vehicle we need to use a sort of uh, a sort of uh, what we call a driving cycle and in this case a driving cycle target is uh, trying to reproduce real traffic condition as shown in this uh, upper figure startup normal, dri normal driving acceleration deceleration and stopping 
as I have previously uh, shown in uh, in the first animation uh, of electric and hybrid vehicles. So we, we have typically uh, uh, for big countries we have uh, we have typical driving cycle. This is the European uh, driving cycle. I will later. I, I, we have already used to test some of our optimal control technique or uh, failure resilience technique. This is called the the uh, the ECE.15. Uh, now uh, now it is known as the NDEC driving cycle. This is the European Urban Driving Cycles. As you can see in this driving cycle, there is typically uh, this is a repetition of uh, of some. Uh, of some typical uh, operation of the vehicle, acceleration, uh, cruising speed, stopping, reacceleration. Typically in this region, we have urban vehicle and in this region, we have extra urban vehicle. So uh, typical US driving cycles are the FTP uh, 75. This is a federal test procedure. It is, it is more interesting than the European because it has a, a sort of uh, Hard, hard acceleration. This is due to the fact that in the uh, U.S. market we use uh, an automatic driving car, which is not the case in the European market. So this is more interesting to use to test, for example, the robustness of a control technique uh, for a, for a vehicle. But at this time, again for the U.S., we have another type of uh, of driving. So this is typically for uh, for highway. So this is a less constrained. Uh, driving cycle with almost uh, an average constant uh, speed but actually in the european market there is a, a sort of a new uh, recommended driving cycle but for light vehicle this is called the wlpt ltp which means worldwide harmonized light vehicle test procedure it looks like like the us the us ftp uh, 55 with more hard acceleration this is more interesting to use now to test uh, uh, to test different procedure uh, uh, for electric and hybrid vehicles so how are uh, these driving cycle used this driving cycle used uh, yes this is the driving the european driving cycle this is typically used to determine the the power the necessary power to to propel an electric or hybrid vehicle and in this black figure which is the the power, what can be seen, we have positive power. Typically, this is uh, power generated by the battery, for example, by an electric vehicle to propel the vehicle. And negative, negative parts here means, of course, this is uh, regenerative braking. But what we can see here, that we have some peak power. Of course, when we read and try to, to determine the type of storage to use in an in, uh, uh, in electric and hybrid vehicle. Yes, of course, actually in the market, we have just, we, just, we use just uh, batch, classical batches, but we, uh, we need to think about using supercapacitors because of this peak power, because this is not good to be stored uh, in, a, in, a, in a classical battery. Now, what about, because one of the issue that, that is faced by an electric vehicle is the requirement of high efficiency. This typically, uh, when we work on the electric proportion of a vehicle, we have high efficiency. We have a sort of map uh, of torque. This is the torque of, uh, of uh, an electric vehicle. And this is the map, the efficiency map. And if you look at the efficiency, if you want to have an efficient proportion, we need to work in this in this region. Of course, this is the limit, of course, in terms of torque. But this is the region in which we need to operate, make make, make the vehicle operating, in order to extend the autonomy. So, typically, when we control the vehicle, so this is like a, a control approach to extend the autonomy, and this control approach. Uh, should lead to make the vehicle operating in this region, in this 90% region. Oh, in this case, so when we talk about uh, uh, extending the autonomy, this means that we, there is a need for power, op power optimization. So we cannot uh, control the vehicle. Of course, we have a driver in the vehicle, but 
the, for the driver who need to propose a specific uh, control of his vehicle according to the way he's driving his vehicle. So there is a clear need for power optimization. optimization. And by power optimization here, we mean typically we need to, this is one of the way, and the main way is to minimize the losses. So uh, this is for the, the power optimization. Now, what about the motor? Now, in the example, I will try to illustrate this power optimization. I will, pro I will discuss just the case of the induction motors and why why this this motor and not the pm motors of course the pm motors has main advantages in terms of uh, of uh, power density but induction motors as adopted by tesla and many other new developer suv seems to be a good if not the best candidates for electric vehicles why because of his reliability robustness maths and also cost so reliability, this is clearly connected to the problem of failure resilience. And which is also very important is uh, this motor is able to work in harsh environment, which is not really the case of the PM motors and typically the, the permanent magnets. When we work uh, uh, with high temperature, the risk is, of course, the demagnetization. Now, just to illustrate that this this motor has is has been and is also adopted in some important application this is just to illustrate some military and sensitive application this is called the uh, the heavy expanded mobility and tactical truck this is a hybrid vehicle and a diesel electric hybrid and typically using supercapacitor supercapacitor here are used to to store all the peak powers and of course this peak power will be used also for not for the propulsion but typically to fit some typical application needing uh, instant uh, uh, instantaneous high power this vehicle is clearly using two two uh, induction motors of about 15 kilowatts for the propulsion and not not uniquely for the propulsion also uh, to move some uh, some here uh, to move this uh, this part of this military uh, uh, vehicle and this is a first example but there is other ones now what about the 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 uh, the power optimization the performance optimization this is type this is typical in this side i'm showing a typical uh, control of of an induction motor including of course the the vehicle dynamics and DTC, which is called, which is the direct torque control, is uh, torque control is the best way, the best approach to to control an electric vehicle. Uh, of course, th this torque, this is a torque control, but the reference, uh, the reference is a speed one, is a re reference speed coming from the from the driver. So the driver is generating the speed reference according to the way he's driving the vehicle, and from this reference. We, we we will try to to match the 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 reference speed uh, required by the drivers and what we want to do here is uh, to optimize the, the performance of the of the electric propulsion typically here the propulsion the the performance of the induction motor this is the classical dtc and what what we have already proposed here and they're very very simple and uh, approach this is a, a loss minimization strategies if you look at this this strategies this is a well-known theorem so if you want to optimize uh, to optimize or to minimize the the, the the losses the dual losses you have to equate the the d uh, the power uh, uh, of the d uh, the, the access to the uh, to the power uh, of the the q axis if you if you achieve this uh, this equality, you have minimized the the, the dual losses, and the, this loss are the main one. In actually, in the market, we have induction motors with a very small uh, uh, magnetic uh, magnetic load. The main loss here are the the dual loss. So, and the target our of our control technique is to try to control the the, the electric motor by reaching this this equality. And if you look at my previous strategy, what is new here is this part 
in, in a gray. This part, this part is the implementation of the of the loss minimization strategy. We need, of course, to have a, a motor loss model. This model is just one. This is a power uh, power loss model, and we need to control this according, of course, to the to the to the uh, stator uh, due current uh, due um, in the uh, d axis and in the q axis, and controlling this uh, this these two current and using this uh, model loss model we will sure achieve loss minimization uh, as an illustration we are we have uh, applied this technique we have a small car here this is a model this is from Chevrolet but it is a, a typical uh, car Th these are the the main uh, characteristic of this test vehicle this is the, the mass what we have here this is the Typically, the the aerodynamic aerodynamics of this car. This is almost classical car, not not a very very good aerodynamic. The classical. This is this parameters is the parameter uh, characterizing the the, uh, the contact of the tire with the with the road. And we have here a, a very uh, um, a test vehicle with a small in, uh, with a small. Uh, uh, induction motor. The, the objective for is for testing, of course. These are the, the the results. So, if you look at the efficiency, of course, here we have gained some points in the efficiency. Maybe you can say that the improvement is not much important. Don't forget that here we are testing a small induction motors. If you move to more important power, uh, actually. Uh, 50, uh, 50 kilowatts and more, this uh, this optimization will lead to extend the autonomy of the battery. And this is just to illustrate how the, the, the optimization process is working. This is before, this is after. And we can see here that uh, before the, the, uh, the, the access power losses are, are important and after we launch the optimization process, the objective was to uh, to make these two losses uh, equals. When they are equals, we are typically um, uh, uh, optimize, optimizing the efficiency. So, uh, first, this was uh, uh, a sort of uh, optimizing the, the performance by controlling the electric machine. There is other options to extend the autonomy, of course, by uh, uh, by uh, an optimal sizing of the propulsion electric component, by all the propulsion electric components. Typically here, in a propulsion component, we have, of course, the, the, the electric motors. This, this component can be, its performance can be optimized by control. And these are the storing component. This component can be uh, optimized in the design stage. So, First option is to to uh, to uh, to make sort of optimal sizing of the energy storage systems, typically uh, the fuel cell and the hydrogen tank for a fuel cell hybrid uh, hybrid electric vehicle, the batteries and the supercapacitor. One, these two are used. And there is another possibility if we have a typical vehicle given which is working just for a given mission and driving cycle, we can optimize it at the design stage. So typically, we have some, some autonomous vehicle working for just one or two given missions. Uh, for example, uh, autonomous vehicle used for by, uh, by Amazons uh, in their storage uh, uh, system. So in this case, we can optimize the, 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 the sizing of the electric in the design stage. Now, I will quickly talk about, uh, about uh, an interesting option uh, if you want to optimize the, the performance uh, of an electric uh, vehicle. One of the uh, problems in an electric vehicle uh, and, and a component with, uh, with, some, uh, with some losses, mechanical losses, is the, is the mechanical differentials. The option here is try to simplify the, the electric vehicle drive arrangement using what we call the, an EDS or an electric differential system. So in this case, we made sort of reduction of the dry line component because we will remove the the, the, uh, the classical dry, um, differentials 
And in this case, when you remove a mechanical component, we are automatically improving the overall reliability. Of course, the efficiency, but also the re reliability because we are re removing a component that can face failures. So the problem when you use this, when you use a, a, an electric differential, so we need to use two electric motor type. Quickly, we, uh, um, uh, re, uh, uh, sorry, wheel motors, and in this case, we need we need the specific control to uh, of these two motors. So this is uh, a classical uh, EV uh, arrangement architectures: one motors, one batteries, one inverters. And this is the uh, what we call an EV without a differential or with an electronic differential. So we have two wheel motors. For unfortunately, of course, uh, two inverters. Uh, and uh, maybe here we can we can optimize the, the the storage using just one battery. Just to show you that this uh, some real world application. This is the Toyota I wrote with the with the with uh, wheel motors, typically when we use wheel motors, these motors are typically permanent magnets. And this is understandable because we need uh, a motor with a high power density and, uh, and typically permanent magnet motors is the best candidate for this type of uh, vehicle. And I, I'm showing also these options for uh, for a sensitive application like military application, this is uh, what we call the uh, STV uh, reconnaissance, surveillance, and targeting vehicle. This vehicle is is using four permanent. This is a four drive, four wheel drive uh, electric motor using four permanent magnet synchronous motors. So each motor is uh, of about 120 kilo, uh, 20 kilowatt. So this is this is an interesting. Uh, application of such kind uh, of uh, of motor. Now, in the in the proposal of uh, removing the, the differential, the mechanical differential, using uh, uh, um, and use uh, uh, an electronic differential, the problem or the issue is the control of the rear propulsion. So we have proposed different solutions. Of course, handling the EV dynamic. This is important. The problem with such such an option. Is how to make, uh, how to uh, achieve the the vehicle uh, stability. In this case, our uh, this is our proposal tested by emulation. So we we propose in this case just for testing uh, again an induction motors. Here we use uh, some adaptive observers to avoid using uh, encoders here, and the the key development are in this differential controller. And this differential controller uh, objective is to make the vehicle uh, uh, is to increase the stability, uh, st uh, the stability of the vehicle, particularly when cornering. So, so here we need uh, we need to to have uh, we, of course it, it's a speed control for each rail uh, rail wheel. And we need to get, of course, the, the, the speed reference. This speed reference is again coming from the driver. Uh, for example, in this case, we are using the driver by the way of the driving cycle. So in terms of uh, uh, driving uh, tra trajectory and trying to validate this uh, electronic differential, we use what we call an Ackermann gentle swing model. This is for just for illustration for testing. Uh, so this uh, this uh, steering model allows to validate uh, the the low speed maneuvers. So the testing vehicle in our case is a small vehicle, is a is a vehicle a testing vehicle from uh, from uh, Fiat, which is an Italian car manufacturer. He developed a small car called the, the Downtown. Uh, we adopted here just for illustration again uh, a motor based an induction motor based propulsion. So this is the, uh, the the performance of the the control. As I said, we are not using uh, speed encoders, but we are using a speed estimation. So, so this is the performance of the uh, the control performance uh, using uh, European driving cycles. We can see here this is uh, 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 straight ahead 
operation of the vehicle. This is turning right, turning left. Each curve is the speed curve of one of the model. When we turn right, this is the speed one of the one of the motor has a lower speed than the others. Of course, one the outer uh, wheel is uh, turning uh, has a, a higher turning speed than the others. This is just to uh, to uh, to validate and to check the, the the vehicle speed. So this is the the estimation uh, and the measured speed of the uh, of the vehicle. And typically, this is the validation of the of the electronic differential uh, system. Now this has been tested uh, by emulations. So uh, we have used two induction motors. One emulating the the uh, inner uh, wheel and the other uh, emulating the uh, the outer speed uh, the outer wheel sorry and again we have used another speed estimator just to confirm the correctness of the our approach and typically this showed that the the the, the vehicle is uh, is following the 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 the, the target speed uh, this is the driving cycle speed with uh, a very very small uh, very small error again to show that there is no uh, uh, stability issues regarding the two uh, the two wheel this is the auto speed the inner speed and again this is this is uh, the estimated the reference and also a measure because we have uh, tested this uh, uh, these two approach by uh, by uh, by emulation now the the second and uh, last topic of uh, of uh, of my presentation this is the the problem of how to handle how to make the, the vehicle uh, resilient in case of uh, failure of course before talking about failures we need to, to need to detect and to diagnose and to localize this this failure this is not the topic of this uh, of this presentation but uh, for those who are interested, I can give you some our previous work in this in this uh, area of uh, for failure diagnosis. Now we are supposed that we have detected a failure, and if it is not, of course, catastrophic, we want to make the vehicle resilient or tolerant to this uh, to this failure. So, in terms of fault tolerance strategies, we have typically two main approach. The first one is the reconfiguration. And typically, this is the most comprehensive approach or action against the fault. So, in this case, we'll we'll have the, I will show later a, a better illustration. We'll exploit uh, redundancy, but inherent to the process in the process. So, this redundancy it could be it could be analytical, which is much interesting, um, more important here. This redundancy will allow us to reconstruct, for example, a, 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 a missed uh, information. Typically, if we lose or we have a failed encoder, we need to reconstruct this information to make the, the system failure uh, resistant to continue the operation of the system. The another approach is the fault accommodation. In this, in this case, uh, and compared to the configure, we have just one controller. In reconfiguration, we can have different controller design it and at an early stage, and we will switch from a controller to another one according to the diagnosed failure. For the accommodation, we have just one one controller that can be reconfigured according to the detected uh, fault. So here we have one controller, and this controller have the ability to accommodate a number of fault, a given number. Though this is just a basic architecture, uh, what we call a fault tolerant control. So in this case, of course, in terms of fault, we can have fault in the actuator, typically in the machine and in the, in the inverters. We can have unfortunately faults also in the system. So this should be handled also. So in this figure, we can see what I have, what I was talking about reconfiguration. In this case, we can according to the detected fault, diagnosed fault, we can uh, set a new control. But in terms of fault accommodation, we have one controller 
but we need to uh, re adapt, recalculate the controller parameter according to the diagnosed fault. So this is typically an illustration of these two approaches. One controller and need to accommodate the force, recalculating the reference according to the diagnosed fault. In the reconfiguration, we have a sort of hierarchy of, of control according to the detected fault. And we need to switch from one controller to the another one. And in this case, the main problem in such kind of rope is how to switch smoothly from one control to another. Just a few words about fault-oriented systems. Uh, our works and development are concerned mainly the, the development of fault-oriented components, but in some, in some application, we need to consider fault for resilience in the design stage. This is an illustration of, uh, of a PMAC motor used in a very critical application because this motor is used as an aircraft fuel pump. So this motor needs to be uh, reliable and uh, resilient uh, as most as possible. In this case, this, is a, this motor has a four phase. So one phase is a redundant one. If we lose one phase, so we will use the redundant phase for emergency. Uh, for example, in an aircraft, we use it just to allow, uh, for example, an aircraft to land. This is another critical application. This is the a motor using, uh, we work in this case with Airbus on the resilience of their landing system. So in this case, we would we use hardware redundancy, an additional an additional, in terms of machines, an additional uh, star uh, in a standby, an additional inverter in standby. If one star is, the, the, the main star is failed, we will switch to another one. And uh, this is the same for the, for the inverter. This is called a dual three-phase configuration. Uh, I will try to not to detail this uh, this uh, this fault tolerance this typically about uh, inverters using just uh, when uh, additional additional triacs to allow this system uh, to be resilient in terms of uh, uh, failure in one of the IGBT. If you lose this IGBT, we can operate resiliently with two two legs without being, of course, with uh, with a degraded performance. But the main issue here is, uh, is that we need uh, access to uh, this uh, uh, DC midpoint. This is not very common in classical uh, application. Another example, of course, is to use, in terms of uh, inverted, to use a redundant leg. If we use one of the, of the main leg of a three-phase inverter, we will switch on the, 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 uh, the, waiting, the waiting leg or the redundant leg. So uh, now I'm going through the application in terms of vehicle. So as I introduced failure resilience, I said that that redundancy and typically analytical redundancy is, is important. And in this case, uh, the, uh, the example I'm showing, the application I'm showing here is the case of an electric vehicle uh, facing a, a, a failure in the encoder. Uh, the speed, uh, the speed information is very important because, as you previously uh, see, that this speed is, um, is important to for the for the vehicle control. So, if you use this speed, the problem is that we we lose the the, the performance, and, uh, and in some cases we need to stop the vehicle. In this case, what we propose is to use what we call virtual sensors, and we can use different type of. Uh, Observe. In this case, we have adopted the extended Kalman filter and the adapt uh, the adaptive observer, typically Lumberger observer, Lumberger observers, and of course for a specific reason. And when we use virtual sensors, and here this is a analytical redundancy, we have to use what we call a voting algorithm because in this case we have two information and we need to use the most reliable information in the control loop. So we need to compute the most accurate speed information. So sometimes in this case, 
just have in mind that the encoder is working in parallel with the two virtual sensor. If we uh, even even working in parallel, this does not mean that the encoder failure is supposed to be the most accurate. And sometimes we are very we were surprised to discover that the that the uh, the system has adopted an estimation speed, the estimated speed, and not the measured one. So in this case. We are testing this approach for this EV powertrain with well, a failure in the in the in the speed encoder. We are using uh, the speed reference as at the European driving cycle, and typically this is the proposal. So again, uh, a DTC, a director control. So this is the speed encoder. So we have, in fact, uh, three uh, three uh, inform speed information. So just in terms of redundancy, for one information, if for one failure, we need two, uh, two uh, by n plus one information. Here, one failure, that means we have three redundant uh, information. So one material information coming from the encoder and two estimations. This is, these are observers. And we need here the uh, 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 a voting algorithm. In this case, we have adopted a very interesting uh, algorithm with the maximum likelihood voting uh, algorithm uh, to test this approach. Since this is the voting uh, algorithm, so in this case, we have three information, the voters, and here, uh, this voting algorithm is constructed so as to have uh, the most reliable and the most reliable speed information, sorry. So the test uh, vehicle is again the same one used previously, but in this case we are using this uh, vehicle, but with a with a more important uh, mo uh, with a motor with a uh, more important size, 37 kilowatt. We of of course use the European driving cycles. So in this case, what we are experiencing or testing is an encoder failures. So we are also testing the robustness of the of the of the FTC approach. We have uh, an encoder failure from at five, from five to uh, eight point five second, and in different in different period, uh, failure recovery, failure recovery. And the objective here says if the system is resilient or not. So in terms of this maximum likelihood voting alg algorithms. We have, of course, we have uh, to choose the, the what we call the, the threshold uh, and the parameters of this voting algorithm. Uh, these are the the uh, the, uh, the threshold uh, the coefficients. It has been set. Of course, we for a vehicle we have high speed uh, high speed range and low speed range. And typically, as I previously meant, we have used. The, the observers post for specific reason. Typically, we use the EKF, the extended Kalman filter, for low speed estimation, and we use the adaptive uh, observer for low speed uh, operation. And in this case, we have given this this reliability coefficient, uh, uh, 0.93 for for uh, so for. 0.98 at low speed and 90.93 at high speed, etc. So, and for the uh, for the encoder, there is no problem. We has one and a constant reliability of 0.99. We suppose that the encoder is giving the, the most reliable information. And in terms of performance, in blue here is just the the the, the encoder uh, issue. So we missed the encoder information at five, we recovered at almost uh, 8.5. We missed it again at after 15 seconds, we recover it here we lo and we lose it here, reco uh, sorry. And we, co we recover it after more than 35 uh, seconds. And in this case, in the figure now, it is convenient for you. The red figure is the adaptive uh, observer, the green one, is the is the extended Kalman filter, and if you can see in this figure, there is no problem of speed tracking. Even if we lose the speed information coming from the 
from the encoder, the vehicle is supposed to still uh, operating with a quite even sometimes very good uh, dynamic, thermo, inter, dynamic performance or speed performance. So this is the experimental tests. Uh, quickly speaking about this test, in this, in the blue curves here, I suppose the, the, the real information, the purple one is the reference speed. This is the target coming from the drivers. And the orange one is the information coming from the motor speed. That This is the speed we are reading. So if we see here, we are losing at this specific moment the speed encoder. So no uh, information is coming from the speed, but the, the, the vehicle and the uh, electric motor is still, uh, the vehicle still increasing and the motor still turning at the correct speed and at the target speed. Of course, here, these are free, these fluctuations are, you know, are the noise coming from the, from the measuring instrumentation. So, uh, uh, um, I hope I, I, I hope I have still time. So, uh, just to give, to illustrate one issue, important issue when we talk about fault resilience and typically when we deal with reconfiguration, the most important uh, problem we have discovered, and this is one of the key issues to be addressed every time uh, you have to handle the this uh, this reconfiguration, it, this mechanism, this reconfiguration mechanism is very important. If you do not handle it correctly, when you switch from uh, from a control technique to another one, when we are uh, when we detected the fault, the problem is is if we switch one, we have we we'll, uh, experience a very important transient. This transit can sometimes destroy the motor because it will generate a high torque that can be uh, very very important. So in this case, we need to. Uh, to uh, to uh, to generate or to set a, a transition a transition mechanism, and in this case we have proposed a, a transition mechanism for the same failure issue. This is a current sense of failure, typically here, uh, current sense of failure. So we have two two uh, two we have testing this for two control technique in case or uh, in in healthy operation or in faulty operation. In healthy, we are using classical vector control technique. In, a, in healthy, we are using a, 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 a specific control technique. We, this, this, these techniques are in standby mode. When we detect the failures, before moving from this control to this one, we need to wait uh, for the this typical angle here. This is the, the angle between the two control voltage before switching. So. Here, this is angle, we need to wait. So the, the transition is not uh, instantaneous, but we need to tolerate a certain degree of degradation before switching to the, to the new control technique in order to avoid uh, a long and destructive transit. And these are the illustration for a, a small electric induction motor of 7.0 kilowatts. So this is the current. If you look on the current, this is before and this is after we, we lose the, uh, the, 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 the current information. So, of course, this is an increase, but the transit is very important. If you do not manage this, this transit, this transit can, be, uh, can lead to a catastrophic uh, consequence on the electric uh, propulsion. So, which is important here to look at the speed. So, here the, the, the moment we lose the current sensor, failure, we leave the information, and we have here the a, a short transient, and after this short transient, we move, we reach again the uh, the target speed. And uh, before ending my presentation, uh, just to talk some some recent works on the on vehicle uh, failure resilience. In this case, the, the resilience is considered at the design stage. And in this case, we propose, and this is very important now, this is the case for, uh, for uh, some Navy application, the use of multi-phase PM machine. This multi-phase permanent magnet machine offers an additional degrees of freedom. Of course, the, 
the additional phase are used for resilience purposes. So we have tested these machines for, uh, for Navy applications. So this uh, in, uh, by hardware in the loop simulation and seems to be very, very interesting options for, uh, for, uh, to be used in, in electric and in hybrid electric vehicle. So uh, I have in my presentation I was supposed to talk about uh, fuel cell, but I will quickly uh, uh, switch this this parts uh, because I want to conclude my presentation because I, I, I think I am more than one hour. Um, of course, uh, hybrid electric vehicles is an option, so I will switch it just and I will go uh, through. Uh, my uh, my conclusions i in my conclusion just this talking just about the future trends so in my uh, in this presentation this lectures I, I was talking about optimal optimal uh, optimization of the performance i was talking also about resilience but uh, the question to be uh, to to ask now is what's next next of course uh, an electric vehicle can experience fa failure but of course he cannot resilient uh, all the time so the next step is to combine this uh, this failure resilience uh, uh, is to combine it with what we call prognostic and health management. Of course, when we detect a failure, we need to to try to evaluate if the if the vehicle is able to handle this uh, this uh, this failure for a long time. And here in this case, we need to uh, determine what we call the remaining useful life, typically of the electric machine or the or other failing component this is the next step important uh, to be carried out typically even in parallel with the with the resilience operation of the, the propulsion uh, in terms of vehicle the vehicle also is uh, is targeted to be used not only for propulsion but uh, actually the tendency is use the vehicle as a mobile power generation storage system in what we call smart grid so the, the vehicle here uh, have different energy based scenario. It can be vehicle to home, vehicle to grid, and they pick even vehicle uh, to vehicle application. And of course, my last uh, slide here. So according to the different scenarios, some other recession are, are talking about the rise of the, what we call the vehicle to everything, the V2, V2X. And this is really a very, very interesting topic uh, to be addressed. If you have already optimized your vehicle propulsion and if your vehicle is safe or even uh, if not is resilient. Okay. So I would like to thank you for your kind uh, attention. And of course, uh, uh, I hope you find this presentation maybe uh, informative and uh, useful. And I'm ready, of course, to, to answer. Uh, questions. Thank you again. I will, I will stop sharing. So, uh, thank you so much, Professor Mohammed, for your amazing and informative lecture. I believe we all learned a lot from this lecture today. Let me to inform all viewers from Malaysia and around the world, you are welcome to pose any relevant question here. So uh, uh, to kick us out question answer section, maybe I'm beginning one question from me first. Uh, actually, Prof, uh, the electric uh, hybrid vehicle can be charged uh, by the renewable energy station, uh, such as the PV station, if you uh, use the battery. And also uh, should be connected uh, with the cable to charging. Uh, is it possible uh, in the future can use the wireless technology for charging the battery? Because sometimes you stop uh, in the street suddenly uh, because of the traffic and what happened. Uh, is it possible to charge the battery with a wireless system, a wireless station system? Yes, thank you. That's a very good question because uh, actually we are, uh, as you see in Brest, we have the sea. So we have work, we are actually working on a, a, small, a small robot. You know this robot is under small robot is um, is a uh, underwater robot is is used to to for maintenance of uh, tidal turbine. So this robot need to have an extended autonomy. So in this case, we have um, 
a project with a company we develop a wireless system charging of this robot so this robot when uh, this his battery reaches a certain lower level of uh, of energy he will move up at the uh, at the surface and we have a charging station this is a wireless so just he had, should not um, go out of the sea but just come close to the station and be recharged we have different type of charging there is a quick recharging or other so but this is in sea this is a harsh environment it is possible but sure for for classical vehicle this is a very very important option mm. thank you so much uh, actually uh, i have one more question because in during the presentation you uh, supposed to use the fuel cell uh, yeah. in the hybrid uh, vehicle um, would you please let me know what is the main reason to suggest uh, the fuel cell yeah, no the, here in fact when we talk about five fuel cell do you some some people use the really say that this is a hybrid this is a hybrid in fact here the the fuel cell will replace the uh, the uh, the, the the ICE, okay. So using using fuel cell, actually, uh, you, w w we have one you know uh, one clear market vehicle. Market vehicle is the the Toyota Mirai. Uh, we have some some cars in the market from uh, BMW. Uh, so the, the the objective is to have a sort of additional source of energy. So of course a clean. So we have uh, the cl real clean uh, fuel cell vehicle use use a, a hydrogen tank. So in this case, we have real clean uh, clean vehicle. So we have uh, typically two two uh, uh, two source of energy: the the hydrogen and the battery. So typically here, the the hydrogen will be used, for example, at the source for you know for uh, almost a steady state regime, and the battery and Typically, uh, I, I skipped some of my uh, slides, the, the final slide. We can use also uh, supercapacitors. This battery and supercapacitor can be used for specific, for example, uh, operating uh, for acceleration, uh, quick acceleration, or uh, and others. So this is the reason. To, so we have a clean, typically clean, but you, and to have also a hybrid source uh, electric vehicle. Uh, of course, Prof. Uh, actually, uh, for the system of the fuel cell, uh, we need to uh, more capacity for uh, hydrogen tank. Is take the uh, capacity in, in, inside the car. Yeah. But uh, I suggest that uh, I think uh, maybe to improve the battery uh, instead the fuel cell. Because the fuel cell need to hydrogen and many uh, and some things more, of course. But yeah. this is the main question: Why we we want to focus on just fuel cell or uh, to hybrid system? No, actually, if you look at the, for example, I take the example of the French market. So there is no the the biggest manufacturer like are developing electric. Actually, there is uh, uh, the market is full of uh, of hybrid hybrid electric vehicle, but there is no there is no project to develop fuel cell. So the object here, for, if you look, even a big German manufacturer like uh, Audi, they do the, the e-tron, there is, it's typically an electric vehicle with an induction motor. So uh, the, the tendency is try to develop uh, more interesting storage battery than developing fuel cell. I, I, I'm, uh, I agree with you. Mm. Of course, uh, in uh, Prof. Actually, during the presentation, you uh, speaking about the uh, step of the speed. For example, two uh, step, the low speed and the high speed. Yeah. Why uh, we need to design uh, this low speed on high speed to separate a step? Yes, actually, in this case, you know, sometimes uh, I, I use this illustration with the extended Kalman feature and this uh, adaptive step because. For example, typically, uh, uh, some observers have some some lack at low speed, and some other has a lack in high speed. So we need to combine. Uh, so if uh, if uh, you are trying to estimate low speeds, which is the case in my illustration, you you need to use a more adapted 
uh, estimation speed. If you are in high speed, some some uh, you need to other use more adapted um, observers. But of of course, this is an illustration. Because but we have uh, actually in the literature some you know more interesting. Uh, um, speed, uh, observer like you know high order sliding mode it's convenient in all the speed range from zero to the to the maximum speed but here in this case we need two we need two additional uh, observers in addition to the speed constant. so this is an illustration but uh, if you try for example yourself to test it for two others yes it is possible to use for example two others but the, the problem was the uh, for example, for common filter, it is more convenient at low, and for adaptive process, more convenient to high speed. Thank you so much, Pro, for answering the question. Uh, let me uh, inform all reviewers uh, uh, you are welcome to post any relevant question. I think we have one uh, question here. Can you read the question, Pro? Yes, from it is from Hassan Kamyab. Very nice. Yeah, Oh, th th thank you for for your comment. I have he said I want question opinion. Biofuel electricity driven car. Oh yes, uh, yes for uh, biofuel. You know, uh, actually there is a market in in Brazil. Uh, I'm not sure if it is not expanding, but in in Brazil they use uh, methanol. So there is really a, a, a market. So. Uh, but actually, if you look at the European market, this is not uh, this is not a target. I, I'm not sure, uh, but uh, but uh, we need to take care of this. Uh, my comment, but I'm not sure there is a, a future <laughs> for biofuel uh, in uh, in the European market. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, uh... Maybe a lot of questions uh, after the day, maybe to contact you later. Yes. So uh, thank you so much, Prof. Uh, I think due to the limited time, we have uh, to finish this lecture. Okay. Uh, and uh, if the viewers have more questions, can just email later. Yes, and I believe welcome. Prof. Muhammad I is happy to answer all questions. Yes, of and, course. Uh, so uh, it's really grateful and honor for me to have uh, managed this lecture today and uh, believe we against a lot today. Thank you again. Now I give back to Prof. Rafi, the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, for your closing remarks. Over to you, Prof. Rafi. Thank you, Amir. Thank you, Dr. Amir Reza, for chairing the session and for introducing Professor Mohammed bin Buzid to me. And to our distinguished speaker today, Professor Mohammed bin Buzid, thank you so very much for, uh, for your sharing session. Uh, it has been a great sharing session and uh, thank you for accepting our invitation so and, uh, to all of you all our viewers around the globe thank you for watching utm engineering distinguished lecture series we have many more interesting lectures for you so do stay tuned until next time bye-bye for now bye-bye thank you very much see you bye-bye